Yeah, this reminds me of Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> It's like Disneyland for adults. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, folks, you may have some trouble hearing me. Obviously, it's very noisy, so you may want to come up a little bit. After we finish with our fermentation process upstairs, the first stop it's going to make on its way down is in this large silver tank to my right here. This is our filter tank. Now, everything will go through that tank. However, not everything will be filtered. If you hold up a walk wick or a new bowl, you'll notice it looks kind of cloudy, right? You can't see through it. That's because it's an unfiltered beer. There's nothing wrong with it. That's beer in its more natural state. That's the flavor profile of that beer. If it does get filtered, you can see through it, and that's known as bright beer. So after that process is done, we fully condition our beer. That means we force carbonate our beer, because we don't have three or four weeks to sit around while it all carbonates. After we carbonate it, it's ready for the bottling line. You'll notice there's a guy standing at the end of the line there, hand placing bottles on the conveyor belt. As they come down the belt, their first stop is in this glass enclosure where we wash and sterilize all the bottles before beer goes into them. After that, they go to this filling machine where a stem will go into the bottle, shoot a little CO2 into the bottle, and fill from the bottom up with beer, forcing oxygen out of the bottle. They'll get a cap or a crown. That gets a little shower to wash off the outside of the bottle. They'll go through a labeling machine. And then you'll notice there's another guy standing over here, hand packaging all of our cases of beer. And we do it by hand so that we can look at every bottle, make sure it's filled all the way, and everything is right about it, okay? So quality control. After that, it'll go to the boxing machine, then onto the pallet, then it's ready for distribution. Now, before we head into distribution, I have a quiz for you. All right, you ready for a quiz? Quiz, 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 quiz. Orange whip, orange whip, three orange whips. What movie is that from? I don't know. The Blues Brothers. Thank oh, you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anyway, so, a quiz for you. When beer goes in the bottle, what temperature is it? Is it hot? Is it room temperature? Or is it cold? Room. Who says hot? Who says room temperature? Who says cold? Who's paying attention to the question? <laughs> All right, hang on. You know how we're going to figure this out? We're going to open one. We're going to drink beer. We're going to drink beer. All right, hang on. I don't know what you guys are drinking, but I'm ready. <laughs> what? Oh, you want some? Who's the guinea pig? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. Tell us the temperature. Hot room or cold? It's cold. It is cold, folks. It's cold going into the bottle. You probably heard on commercials, cold filtered, right? Like that's a big selling point. It's not. Everybody does it. <laughs> Unless you're a home brewer, you're going to cold filter your beer. So don't believe the hype, folks. And you do realize that most of those people, those companies want you to drink their beer as cold as possible. You know why? It tastes like nothing. Taste is massive. Yeah, you can't taste it if it's that cold. Because if you knew what that really tasted like, you know? Here. All right. So we're all going to take a taste of this. You are drinking today Pennsylvania Pale Ale. Now, I'd like to remind people when I'm pouring this, walking around, 
that there's very f what the <laughs> Some guys. That there's very few times in your life when you can actually mark on the calendar the greatest day you ever had. I don't care if you've been married. I don't care if you had kids. When you drink beer right off of a bottling line, that's easily the greatest day you've ever had. All right? Take my word for it. You're about to find out. I showing you absolute control. All of these <laughs> All right, don't worry, we're not going to run out. <laughs> you know why? We're in the brewery. <laughs> Come on. I know it's early yet. Are you following here? You hungry we were both like, <laughs> yeah, you were right on there. <laughs> Good. Where did I leave off here? Battle Royale. Yes, Scott, tell me not that at all game. Yes, I watched it. Yeah, I Still more, just still more. Did I get everybody yet? Who did I miss? Yes. Did I get everybody? Mm hmm. Oh, jeez, I had too much beer. <laughs> oh, no. Like, that's ever been said. Like, anybody's ever said that sentence before. Oops, too much beer. Right. All right, so what do you think? Delicious. No, seriously, Delicious. how does it taste, though? I mean, it's incredible, right? It's incredible. Because it's fresh. And the whole point of this little exercise was not to help you to pre-game a little bit more today. Pre-gaming? Pre-gaming? Right? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> We're priming the pump for later. I know. I understand how it works. It's fine. But it's to prove to you that freshness matters with beer. Beer is not wine. You don't want to sit around vintaging for weeks. Okay? You want to drink it as fresh as possible. And this brings me to my next point, And that's our distribution system. If you look outside that door there, you will see... Look, a PPA truck. <laughs> Not Philadelphia parking. <laughs> this is the only PPA you should ever like. <laughs> but inside our truck, you will only find our beer because we are one of the few operations that self-distribute. And we do this, number one, for the freshness. Every case, every keg that leaves this building is time stamped. So when you go to the bar, the restaurant, the beer distributor, you get your beer from, Okay, we're going to walk in there, we're going to see how long our beer's been sitting. And if it's been sitting too long, we buy it back from them, and we replace it with fresh beer. Honest to God, because it's that important. You can taste it right here, right? Mm -hmm. Do not ask me what we do with the beer we buy back. Mm -hmm. One look at me and you probably know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my second trimester. <laughs> right? but I always say you never want a skinny beer toy guy, right? It's like going to a bald barber. So, the second thing, the second thing is you can't trust them. The second thing is, with a distribution system, is the cost. How many of you here have gone into a bar, restaurant, and paid six, seven, eight, nine dollars for a pint of beer? I admit it, I've done it myself, okay? Well, the sad truth is that what you paid for was not the craft of the beer, it's how it got from point A to point B. It was the delivery system the distribution system, because many hands had to handle that beer before it got to you. And everybody that touches it drives the price up so they can get their cut. We've eliminated that, because it goes right from here to the place you get it from, okay? So when you go out, you know, you hang around Philly or wherever, you're going to, you should, I say you should find our, cheer, our beer cheaper, because, you know, we can't control what retailers charge, but they're getting it cheaper from us, for sure. So now you know something. Okay? Now that limits our range because we're driving our own trucks, right? So we're in Philly, we're in South Jersey, we uh, get about as far west as Harrisburg, Hershey, we go up to Wilkesbury, Allentown, all up there. We send a truck out to Pittsburgh once a week. We're even starting to creep our way towards uh, New Brunswick in New Jersey. Very slow expansion, but this way we maintain our model, we maintain the control over our beer and its freshness and its cost, okay? Now, the next step here. You may have noticed on this tour is that I gave you no history at all, right? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see people are pissed about it. This guy, <laughs> this guy back here. <laughs> Living. He's already unbuttoned his shirt. <laughs> and I can see it. He's starting, he's starting to get ready. He's ready to tangle. All right? So, I'm going to give you some beer history right now. And this is exactly how things happened. I don't care what you've heard anywhere else. 
okay? Don't listen to those kids on the street corner. That's not how it went down. All right? <laughs> So, in 1682, right before I was born, there was this Quaker dude over in England, right? And his father was owed a very hefty debt by the King of England. However, Quaker dude's father was dead, you know? So he ain't collecting the debt. Quaker dude has the cojones to go up to the king and say, this is what he said. He said, yo, king, it will be totally badass if I had my own colony. King was like, yo, all right, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> word for word, right? Yeah, so, no, this, this was in his diary. Uh, so the king, you know, hands him his charge and says, Yo, here's your colony, get out of my country before I cut your freaking head off. Because the king was not so cool with Quakers, you know what I mean? So, dude sh grabs a charter, sails on over, comes up to Delaware, that's that big body of water over here, right? You smell it, haven't you? <laughs> he comes up to Delaware and he notices there are Swedish people fishing out of caves into the Delaware. Did you know the Swedish were here first? Before no. the English? No. You knew it, right? And they were fishermen. They were fishing into the Delaware River. I mean, where else do we get Swedish fish from, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said it. So, <laughs> he lands right around where Sugar House Casino is, although he doesn't go in, this is not a good word. <laughs> and he plans out the city of Philadelphia. Now, if you've been downtown stumbling around, you notice it's in a grid. You can't possibly get lost, right? You've all been downtown, I hope, right? Yeah. Right? It's, it's impossible to get lost until you get the kids to fish down, which is where you are right now. Because there's a single straight freaking road in the place. Everything is ass backwards around here. Not coincidentally, this is where all the breweries were, too. <laughs> Think about it. There is a correlation. All right? So, the guy plans out the city and declares it a beer town. And the man I'm speaking of was a brewer himself. He did make his own beer. Do you know who I'm talking about? William Penn. Yes. William Penn, with confidence, he says it. With confidence, right? He's the guy up on City Hall. Have you seen him up there? Who's yeah. seen City Hall? Yeah. Right? He's got his hand out like this. He's holding his charter. You know what he's pointing at with this? You know what? He's pointing at us. He's saying, go have a beer, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Am I kidding? Look at his hand. He's pointing right at us. I swear to God. All right. So, to prove my point further, in 1683, the first commercial brewery ever, colonies or states, opens here in Philadelphia. First commercial brewery. Out of all 13 colonies, Pennsylvania is consuming more beer than all of the other colonies combined. <laughs> and any way you can beat New York, you got to take it. <laughs> That's the way we think of this city, you know? All right, in 1840, the first lager ever made in the United States was made here in Philadelphia. Take yourself down to the corner of America and Poplar Street, and you'll see the sign marking the very spot. Okay, so the first lager ever was made here. In 1885, the building you're standing in was built. It was a brewery. Go outside, you'll see the original name still up there in the masonry work. Vice Brown and Hesse made a German style lager. And uh, they were in business until about 1939 in typical Philadelphia fashion. They got all the way through Prohibition and then went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> 1939, 1930, it's honest and got true. 1939 to 2000, the place is an empty shell. We came in outfit for brewing again, and since 2007, we've been the Philadelphia Brewing Company. Now, I'm proud to say that room you were in upstairs pre-gaming in was not just for pre-gaming. It is a meeting place. It's a place where we have neighborhood groups, neighborhood associations meet and do planning for the community. Civic associations, okay? We host cleanup days around Kensington. Come through here on the summer, you may see a barbecue out here with everybody, you know, pitching in to help clean up the neighborhood. We also work with local growers. Did you know there's a farm in Kensington right down here? Mm -hmm. Green Grows Farm. They grow hops for us and other ingredients that we use in our beers. Local fresh ingredients used right in our beers. All right? We compost everything that we produce out of here. All right? So it's more than just making beer and making money. It's about community building. It's about making an anchor in the community. People can rely on. People can meet here and do things. Right? So, yes, we love our beer, but we like the people that drink it better. Somebody should write that down. <laughs> you write that down? I just, I I just made that up. I just made that up. That was good. That was good. And I have one of those moments of clarity in here once in a while. All right. So, before I let you go, I have to remind you to visit the gift shop. You know why? So we can get some beer there? Beer in it. Yeah. Now, I know the Museum of Art ain't got beer in their gift shop. So you know what I'm saying? So, what you do is you go out there and you buy beer and you give it to people, especially if you're lonely. Because if you're lonely and you need friends and you give people beer, you're going to have friends. <laughs> you understand? Right? You can't screw that up. Just give people beer and you'll have friends. So, you can go out there and get yourself a case of beer. You can mix and match your own case of beer any way you want. See these variety packs here? Any way you want any of our flavors. It's up to you. 
You can do the same thing with a six pack. We also have growlers out there, those half gallon jugs. We'll fill them for you upstairs. Or you can bring us any growler you own and we'll fill it for you. It doesn't have to be one of ours. We'll fill any growler, okay? My advice, however, to you is to do things right today. Hit it hard, take no prisoners, and get yourself a keg. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you only get one Saturday a week. You might as well do it upright. You know what I mean? So hit it hard, get yourself a keg. Or on the other hand, if you're starting to get the shakes, you get a little bit of the DTs or the chills or something, get yourself one bottle of beer, give yourself a bump, you'll be fine. Okay? <laughs> okay? You can do that too. However, you cannot drink any of that beer on the premises here. Uh, you'll have to find yourself an alley down the street somewhere. <laughs> and we don't have brown bags, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right? So, folks, thank you for taking the tour. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Woo! You're going to head out this door. Straight ahead is the gift retail area, or hang a left. You'll see the steps that you came in first on, and then right up those steps, back in the tasting room. Hang out as long as you want. Relax. Enjoy your day. Okay? Woo! Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, I have more beer. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I know, but he's just staring at me. I think that guy's beer over there. Do you guys use the clear bottles for cider? Yes. Good call. Now, my name is not Jesus Christ, so I can't make these two bottles last all day. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I got a little left. Oh, you guys are going to have to take it all. So good. Thank you. Thank you.